Davos, Switzerland. A lot of focus on Africa in Davos and a lot of focus about the optimism towards Africa. And Africa is definitely open for business. And here's a story that will illustrate that point. Rand Merchant Bank has arranged a 100 million US dollar syndicated loan facility for the trading arm of Mohammed Enterprises Tanzania Limited, METL, which is one of Tanzania's largest diversified conglomerates. In the Joburg studio, the Power Lunch studio in Johannesburg, is uh, Mohammed Duji, who is the CEO of METL and also a member of parliament in Tanzania. Mohammed, thanks very much for joining us lunchtime. Tell us a bit about METL, first of all. Thank you. Um, basically, METL uh, started off uh, as a trading company, and uh, over time, we moved into manufacturing, invested in agriculture, we got into logistics, sales, marketing, invested in insurance, and, and finally, we got into petroleum business, uh, distribution of fuel. Uh, as a whole, today, METL Group is employing 24,000 people in Tanzania, that is 5% of formal employment. Our revenues uh, have hit almost $800 million uh, by 2012. We're expecting to be at a billion by next year and, and four to five billion dollars uh, in the next five to seven years. So if you look at the growth, I mean, the company has grown 30 folds uh, from the time I joined. Of course, the chairman, Mr. Gulam Deuji, had started us. Uh, I joined in in uh, 1998. I graduated from Georgetown. And when I joined in, uh, it was more of a trading business that grew tremendously. And that shows the growth of the country. I mean, if you look at Tanzania and East Africa as a whole, uh, the growth story is amazing because we are growing at 7 8%. If you look at SADC countries, are going at a much lesser rate. And if you look at the world economy as a whole. So East Africa is, is a place to be. And of course, Tanzania geographically is, is amazing because it has eight countries around it. So it has Uganda, it has Kenya, it has Malawi, it has Mozambique, Rwanda, Burundi, it has Eastern Congo. Uh, as a whole, geographically, it's a gateway to East and Central Africa. It has, I mean, today I can be competitive from Dar es Salaam port more than the Durban port into Zambia, for example. Uh, you must have heard now we've hit gas. They're talking about a billion cubic feet of gas. Tanzania is the third largest uh, gold producer in Africa. We're the fourth largest cotton producer. We are in coffee. We have tourism. You must have heard of Kilimanjaro and Serengeti. So as a whole, I'm very, very upbeat, very, very bullish in that region. And, and, and I'm positive that, that coming with the gas coming up, I think this country, as Tanzania, will be the largest economy in eastern central Africa by 2020. It's very good to hear you talking so optimistically, and certainly your, your company is at the forefront of the development of uh, uh, Tanzania, from what, from what you say anyway. Let's talk more about the loan, first of all. Why do you need $100 million? You see, um, first I'll tell you, the whole liberalization of the banking sector was delayed in Tanzania, so access to capital was very difficult. So I started coming to South Africa, and, and if you look at historically, we started the relationship with RMB, uh, five to six years ago with a half million dollar loan. They were financing us on sugar and wheat only. But over time, the confidence has grown, the business has grown, eh? so there is a need of more capital for organization. And therefore, RMB has been amazing to understand our business. They've been coming to Tanzania for, for many, many years. And, and now, today, we have a basket of commodities. So today, they're financing me cotton because I have textile mills. I buy cotton, I spin, I weave, I process. They're supplying me, I mean, they are, they're giving me credit on palm oil, which is crude palm oil, I have refineries. So you talk about palm sterine, you talk about palm, palm fatty acid distillator, you, they're, they're, they're financing maize. I mean, Tanzania produces two million tons of maize. They're financing sugar. There's a shortfall of sugar in Tanzania, so we're big importers of sugar. They're financing many, many other products, let's produce, because Tanzania is a 
great producer of sesame seeds and pigeon peas and yellow posses that have been exported out of Tanzania into India, into Japan, into China, and so forth. So basically, there's a huge basket of, of, of goods. I mean, Tanzania is, is the third largest cashew producer. So I buy cashew nuts, and I need an intermediary financing before I get paid by, by uh, the people who buy the, those cashews from me. So they've worked out this amazing facility of $100, of $100 million, that has grown over five years. And, I, and I'm expecting that, that going forward within a few years, this number is going to get bigger and bigger because uh, the business is getting bigger and the margins are really good. So this $100 million, in short, is financing all these commodities. There are maybe 12 to 14 commodities that METL deals in. Mohammed, I think what you must do is come down to South Africa and actually list your company on the JSC Securities Exchange. That's for another conversation. You said one thing earlier when you were talking about cotton. You said you spin, you weave, and you process. Now, I'm going to link that back now to one of the banking partners within this deal here. It's so Rand Merchant Bank, and you've extolled their virtues very nicely, so well done. China Construction Bank, also involved. How involved is China with uh, commodities in Tanzania and in, indeed the continent in your mind? I, I think, you know, China has made good inroads into, into our continent. Principally, you have to look at history. I mean, they've been connected to our African continent for a very long time. I mean, China, what was China 20 years ago is not what China is today. And, and th we had natural resources. But at that time, I remember the Chinese have supported the Tanzanian government, the Zambian government to build the Tanzania Zambia Railway. Uh, they have supported many, many manufacturing industries uh, in Tanzania and in the region. So I feel t they, they currently have come up. I mean, see, they have got easy financing, so they help our countries grow. Right now, we've hit the gas in, in Tuara, which is uh, the, the southern region of Tanzania. They're helping us build a $1.2 billion uh, pipeline into Dar es Salaam, which is uh, the commercial capital. But to answer your question, yes, sometimes we do face a, a competition from cheap Chinese products. But I believe our governments are becoming far more intelligent. Any company that is producing in Tanzania or in the region, then we keep the taxes as barriers to support our industry. So for example, the textile, you know, we all know the Chinese are very good in textiles. So the Tanzanian government pretty much helps to support us in terms of taxes and tariffs, and also has taken out VAT, which is the value addition tax for local manufacturers. Uh, so anyone that is using local cotton to produce textile is exempt. China gives you a cushion because, as we know, China has got huge economies of scale, one. So price-wise, they are very competitive. Two, the power sector, the power is much more competitive. Three, the labor is far more efficient than ours here because the output is much bigger. So in general, their price is far more competitive. So if we let those, those, those goods come in into our country, then of course we will not be able to, to, to do well and not be able to give employment. But on the other hand, you know, you take an example of, of let's say shoes. If there is no manufacturing of shoes in Malawi, then why would you want to block the Chinese cheap shoes coming into in, in Malawi? Because, you know, as Africans, we are tired of wearing secondhand uh, clothing and secondhand shoes. So it is better. So we take advantage of their cheap products because our people, their purchasing power is low, so they can, you know, uh, be able to wear and afford these, these clothing. At the same time, we have to balance where we have manufacturing, where we need to have value addition, we need to protect our industry. Mohammed, thanks very much for your time this lunchtime. Well done on the deal. I hope that uh, deal um, uh, spurs, uh, spurs rather many more deals in the future for your company, METL. Certainly all the different commodities you've spoken about and all the links between the different countries. Terribly encouraging for the African continent. And that's exactly what we're getting out of Davos, Switzerland as well. That was Mohammed Duji, who is the CEO of METL, Tanzania's conglomerate, and also a member of parliament in Tanzania as well. This is Power Lunch. We're taking a quick break now and we'll be back back in a minute or so.
Power Lunch, brought to you by Altec.